Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago and Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 257, season 11. Today's date is September 23rd, 2023, and welcome to the program. On today's show, I will talk about my memories of those wonderful lunchbox snacks I had in the 1970s when I was a kid. Uh, for example, uh, like uh, Twinkies, potato chips, um, like drink pouches, fruit, <laughs> maybe candy bars, maybe sometimes like that. And I will uh, discuss what I had and uh, talk about a little more further on that subject. Also, I will talk about the music craft stores that were located in the Chicagoland area. All right. Uh, first, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Carnation Slender Drink. <laughs> I remember this one. So here's a commercial from 19... I mean, the commercial is from 1970. So just sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the show. Thank you, everyone. Every woman with a weight problem knows about owning two different dress sizes. One size for after the crash diet, another for when the pounds return. But today, a lot of women are coming back to one perfect size. With Carnation Slender, you can make Slender part of your diet plan because Slender is natural tasting with no cyclamates. Make it. Make a Slender comeback. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial. Uh, Slender Drink Mix. Sorry about that. Uh, that came out in, the, I think, late 60s. And then it was very popular in the 70s. I remember watching the commercials on television. Uh, I don't know if they were guaranteed to work. <laughs> I had no idea about that product. It's like Slim Fast. Remember that? Slim Fast is still around. You know, I tried SlimFast a few times uh, a few years ago uh, when I was working in America's Best Travel. I was trying to lose weight. I gained so much weight because uh, when I worked there, there was so much food oh, every day. And I ate out. Yeah, I won't get into that. That's a long story. So, uh, so it's, it was very unhealthy. Uh, you drink a shake in the morning, you drink a shake in the afternoon, and then you have a sensible meal and you know, like uh, at dinner time. I worked for a while, but then I caved in. I, I just ate. It did not work, you know. Uh, diet plans, they do work at first, you know, and you do lose weight. You have to stick with it. Sometimes you, but uh, they don't last long. I don't know, because something happens in your life, happens in your life, excuse me, and then you just veer off course, and uh, then you ate, then you eat more than you that you did before, and then you gain a lot more weight than you were. And uh, it, it it's successful to most people, it really is. But uh, who knows? But you got to exercise, you know. Yeah, do that. That would help. It really does. As for me, you know, I I I'm not on a diet plan or anything. I, I can't. I asked my doctor one time, uh, "Can I be on a diet plan?" I uh, he flatly refused <laughs> because he says, "No, you're cancer. You're a cancer survivor, and you need all the protein. You need uh, you need your strength. You got to eat like that. Don't eat too much." So I told him, "Well, I just have a light breakfast, uh, no snack. If I want a snack, I have a piece of fruit." Uh, for lunch, I have a light lunch, you know, sometimes I have cereal or a sandwich, you know, if I want dessert, I'll have dessert, but I won't, the key is don't have two <laughs> and don't eat, eat the same one every day. That helps a lot, you know, and, uh, you know, the funny thing is I don't eat anything from lunch to dinner, nothing, you know, if I, I have water or just, uh, if I get hungry, maybe a little, like a piece of candy or something or something like that. But I don't, I usually don't eat. No, I'm not hungry. Then I'm at a big dinner. You know, I eat well, you know, then after dinner, uh, if I get, I have to eat something before I go to sleep. I need something in my stomach. So I have like a cookie or something like that. 
one of my mom's uh, favorite uh, cookies that she makes or like a little piece of bread or something like that. I, I, because I can't sleep on an empty stomach. It's not good because it's going to growl and you can't sleep. Sleep is important like that. You know, so I have lost a little weight. I, I'm better now. I first weighed 100, 200, uh, like about 239 pounds like that. This is before I was diagnosed as prost- in, excuse me, a prostate cancer. But now I'm about 205. I've lost 35 pounds. So that's great. I'm still losing. The problem is I can't I do that, but I can't really lose weight because I'm on medication. And I think that's the problem. You know, it won't let me, you know, so but I have to take my medication. You know, for the, you know, it's a, that's for the hormone thing for the prostate cancer. So uh, we'll see what happens. I still do my walks, you know, a little bit, but I hurt my foot last week. Too much walking, so it's better now. But I will take it easy. I will not. I used to do sixty laps on my driveway. Now I cut down to thirty a little bit. But if it starts hurting, I will stop. You know, and just go inside. Okay. All right. And at the beginning of the program, I talked to, uh, I said I was going to talk about my memories of the lunchbox snacks I had in the 1970s as a child, you know, when I was in school. Also, I talk about the music craft uh, uh, store that was located in the Chicago area. Before I get started, I'll talk about a couple things. One, uh, there was an anniversary this week. Uh, it was the, uh, the TV series Hotel. That premiered September 21st, 1983. I used to watch the show every Wednesday night, right after Dynasty. Yeah, my mom and I wished to watch that. We call it uh, Dynasty Night. <laughs> it was a good show. It was like Love Boat, a landlocked love boat. <laughs> Only it was more serious than the love boat. They had comedy on the love boat. They had serious t- things, you know, moments, but the hotel was much more serious. And it was grounded. Had a good cast, James Brolin. You remember him from uh, Marcus Well, the MD. Also, Connie Selica, very beautiful lady. And Sherry Belafonte, um, daughter of uh, Harry Belafonte. So, and they had like a guest stars and all that. I had to show on DVD. I've saw it a couple times on DVD, but I, I stopped because I wanted to watch something else. I got to rewatch it again, you know. And uh, it's a good show. In the pilot, Betty Davis was in the pilot, but she got sick. I, she, I think she had a stroke. And then Ann Baxter took over the role for a few years, and then she died of a stroke. Yeah, like that. Also, um, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. I posted on my profile. If you'd like to donate, uh, my people, I've donated, but only a couple people have so far. And it's only September 23rd. So please donate to this worthy cause. You know, we got to fight this uh, this terrible disease. All cancers are bad. They really are. We have to fight. You know, um, so I'll keep it on for about another week. And that's it. <laughs> and uh, as for my health, I... Um, yeah, I had some news about that uh, last week. I won't share it with you yet. It's not bad news, but it's sort of good news. But I want to wait. I want to hear from the doctor. It's actually my oncologist. He's going to call me soon and tell me. And then I will fill you in. And, you know, I'll post the news and let you know. But it's uh, not bad. It's not bad good news. It's not bad news. It's good news. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to talk about music craft first because I saved the best for last. <laughs> so music craft store uh, sold a uh, record uh, like stereo uh, equipment, stereo system equipment um, like that, you know, for your house and all that. And uh, I don't know when the store opened. It opened probably in the 50s. And uh, the first location was at 48 East Oak Street in Chicago in the Gold Coast area. I found an ad and I found the phone number. You remember the phone numbers with the call, with the uh, telephone exchanges with the letters. So the, it, the telephone exchange was Delaware 74150. So it was DE 74150. <laughs> and that was located on the same block where the Esquire Theater was. Uh, that was a good thing. I went once at that theater. 
in the 70s. Uh, it was very nice, very nice here. And I, uh, Music Craft, I think it was gone by then. I'm not sure where it closed at the location. Probably uh, in the 70s, maybe after I visited the Esquire. I didn't see it. Well, I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, so they had other locations. Uh, like, for example, they had it at, uh, well, I'll read them off for you. Uh, they had one in Morton Grove, 5700 West Dempster, uh, west on 7045 West North Avenue. That's in Oak Park. South, it was at 3225 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. I will talk about that store in a moment. Also, it was far south, 181st and South Halsted in Homewood. Also at the Lombard Pines Plaza. At Maine and Roosevelt. And I think the headquarters was in Palatine. Uh, I don't know where in Palatine. I should have looked it up. But I think that's where their uh, main office was. And they, I believe they had a store there as well. So, uh, for example, they sold stereo equipment. They sold uh, speakers cassette tapes, um, maybe um, tape recorders, you know, anything audible they had there. And uh, that was kind of nice like that, <laughs> you know, and like with the stereo, um, in the old days, they used to sell the stereos, the wooden ones, like that, in like in furniture, and it looked gorgeous in your home. Uh, they don't do that today. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, they don't. Uh, they sold, you know, record players, like portable ones, uh, probably uh, amplifiers, like that. Now, I visited the one in Evergreen Park. And, uh, well, first it was uh, located at uh, 2035 West 95th Street. That was near Damon in the Beverly area. Then it moved to uh, the the address I just mentioned at 3225 West 95th Street. That's west of Kedzie. Uh, I didn't visit the one in Beverly. I visited the one in Kedzie. And uh, let's see. I was in high school. I was in the area. Uh, my doctor lived uh, at his office at the time. I went to the store and looked around, you know, just for curiosity's sakes, and uh, just browsed to see. Uh, I also found uh, there was a friend of mine that worked there uh, at the time. Uh, he went to high school with me. I, I didn't, uh, we weren't in the same class. He was there and uh, I just said hi to him and then I just looked around. I didn't buy anything. So it was fascinating. And then you know, had music playing <laughs> like that. This is the seventies, you know, sometimes they had rock music, disco, all that. It was a cool store. It was a very nice store. Yeah. So uh, as the years went on, uh, there were others in, um, that were competitors, like, for example, Pacific Stereo. There was Playback. I think there was another one called Lafayette. I can't think of the other one. Uh, I think there was another one. Yeah, but there was Playback. Uh, also, um uh, yeah, playback and uh, Pacific Stereo. Uh, there was one, I think Pacific Stereo was on 95th Street. Probably not gone. And then uh, as the years went on, uh, it closed. Uh, the stores were closing. And then the last store was closed in, I think, in Homewood. I think that was the last one in May of 1995. I don't know what the reason was. Uh, I guess competition or times have changed. You know, uh, you know, vinyl wasn't around. Now it's made a big comeback. You know, vinyl records like that. But then, uh, but pe people still talk about the store. They still do to this day. You know, they miss it. You know, so uh, the logo was "Make My Music." That was the store uh, slogan. Make my music. Okay. So uh, when I posted this yesterday, I'm um, in Chicago and the memories kept flooding in. People talked about it. A couple of people worked there at the stores. 
and they were customers and uh, they they shared their memories on the page and that was very nice and very nice indeed you know like that okay right now i'm going to talk about uh the good stuff i'm going to talk about my memories of the lunchbox snacks i had in the 1970s uh you know where you had the snacks in my lunchbox that your that my mom put in or all the kids and their mothers put in uh, I talked about lunch boxes uh, probably on a previous podcast episode. I think I think I did, and uh, I talked about my first one. My first lunch box was the Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels were big, you know, the cars from Mattel Toys. And my earliest uh, memory of what my mom put in my lunch was always a sandwich, either a peanut butter or jelly. I don't like peanut butter and jelly together. It does taste weird to me. <laughs> I can explain this story to people. They think I'm nuts, but I just don't like it together. I like it separate. So I would have a peanut butter sandwich or a jelly sandwich or maybe a hot dog, you know. And you would have a the lunchbox who would come with a thermos, either with some milk, you know. But this, with the school that I went in, great, in uh, elementary school, they had milk there, so it wasn't necessary. Sometimes you would have soup or something to drink like that uh something else to drink like uh, soda or uh, orange juice i love that and of course she uh she put the snack in and there's so many to talk about there really is and uh like for example uh the most classic ones uh that of the snacks was the hostess snack cakes and uh I have great memories of those. Uh, my mom used to buy a box of them, you know, like for example, Twinkies. Uh, the other day I posted a photo of Devil's Food Twinkies. A lot of people don't, they're saying, I don't remember this. I remember this. They say it's, it's divided, you know, like that, but I sure did. And uh, there were those. Uh, she, my mom would have the regular ones or the double food ones. You know, snack cakes back then tasted so good. The reason was they had trans fat. Now they removed it, and now they're kind of <laughs> They're okay, but it's healthier. I wouldn't say healthier, but <laughs> but it was so rich and good like that. This is a funny story about devils, uh, the Twinkies with the devil's food. If you remember the episode in All in the Family where Edith Bunker was calling for jury duty and she, they had to, and she had to be sequestered and she was with this rich uppity lady and, uh, Edith was uh, eating chicken croquettes. That was the dinner and the snooty lady didn't want to eat it. Eh, she don't eat the hotel food. <laughs> she was just as coffee. And then Edith would describe Archie's lunch. I will always put, uh, Archie would love that kind of meal with an orange and a Twinkie. And the lady goes, a uh, Twinkie. <laughs> and then Edith is describing the Twinkie. <laughs> so there's these little cakes about that that big, and they always come in devil suit. And the lady yelled at her, I'm not in, this is Bunker, I'm not interested in your Twinkies. I want to go home. <laughs> so that was the first mention of, a, of Twinkies on television and also devil suit. You know. uh, I think devil suit. Uh, the, the flavor, I think it's still around. They keep bringing it back, uh, but I don't know if it's on a permanent basis. Maybe it is. I don't know. I have no idea. Other snacks of her hostess were, uh, for example, cupcakes, ding dongs. I think they were first called King Don's. Uh, ho, ho. Yeah, so it was Twinkies, uh, Ho Ho's, ding dongs, fruit pies. Suzy Q's, Snowballs. Remember Snowballs with the coconut? Like that. Um, there was also crumb cakes, but the, that's a little more adult <laughs> for the kids. Uh, I can't think of anything else. You know, they came from Hostess. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to play a commercial for the Hostess. Uh, this, I'm sorry. I'm going to play a commercial for Hostess Snack Cakes. This is from the early 1970s, and it does mention the Twinkies and the Devil's Food flavor. When I come back, I'll talk about the other snacks I had when I was a kid in my lunchbox. Okay? So sit back and let's go back in time. Thank you, everyone. 
Snacks, snacks, everywhere snacks. Welcome to the snack cake jungle. Everywhere you look, snack cakes for the kids. Are there any that have more than good taste? Yes. Hostess announces snack cakes now fortified with vitamins and iron. You can thank the Hostess Bakers for new vitamin fortified snack cakes with the good taste kids love and good nutrition they need. Like Hostess Twinkies in regular and new devil's food. That luscious cake with creamy filling now gives your children more than good taste. It gives them important nutrition too because now Hostess Twinkies are fortified with bodybuilding vitamins and iron to grow on. Yes, now there are snack cakes with more than good taste. New vitamin fortified Hostess snack cakes. Look for the V on packages of Hostess Twinkies. Thank Hostess for the good taste kids love and good nutrition they need. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. Our Hostess snack cakes. That was from the early 70s. <coughs> I mentioned the Twinkies and the devil food flavor ones uh for hostess uh, they're still around they just were bought by the smucker company so that's good uh they were out of they were going out of business first and the uh but they were bought out by some other company uh but yeah but they were saved like that and uh like that uh i forgot what i was going to mention oh yeah the um yeah, the Twink, so they were bought up by Smuckers. That was announced about eh, last week, something like that. Um, question is, uh, a lot of people have asked, do you still eat these snacks? Me, is, I'll, I'll be 60 years old next uh, in a couple of weeks. So, you know, I've had a Twinkie about last year. It wasn't the same as uh, when I was a kid. It's a change. At first, when they brought it back, it was like kind of tasteless, but then they improved the flavor a little bit, but no, <laughs> like that. They didn't do that at all. So I, I try to avoid it. I try to avoid, you know, because it's processed food. It's not good. All that sugar. <laughs> okay. Another snacks, uh, well, snack cakes were, of course, Little Debbie's. Uh, I, my mom didn't buy those much, you know, but they're still available to this day. You can find them at Jewel or Target or Walmart. You know, they, they sell some. It's still popular. I like that. I like the zebra cakes. Oh, they were good. And the oatmeal cream pies. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fun. Another uh, snack cakes we got is Dolly Madison. Yeah, uh, my mom sort of buy the bought those in uh sometimes uh do you remember they had the they had the fruit pies uh the zingers uh let's see what else they had uh, zingers came in three flavors um chocolate raspberry like raspberry coconut and vanilla uh there was also uh, like cupcakes they were like no they were like ding dongs in a way and one the, there was a razzies it's like a raspberry coconut ding dong and there was cuckoos and there was like a like a ding dong <laughs> they don't make those anymore no uh what else and they of course the zingers and they had the dolly madison gems those were the donuts like that and i remember they advertised they advertised these uh very heavily in the 1970s when they had the peanuts specials you know that created by charles schultz like uh uh like you know, but, uh, you know, with the Christmas special, uh, I can't think of the name, <laughs> you know, it's been on every year. Uh, so, and then, uh, the, yeah, so I used to watch those, those were on CBS on channel two all the time and they would advertise by Dolly Mass and they had the penis characters like that. Um, so, but then uh, Hostess bought the company. I don't know when. Oh, it's Charlie Brown Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they bought. Yeah, they bought the company. I don't know when. And now it's not Dolly Madison. It's Hostess. They still sell zingers uh, and, the don and the donuts, the gems. Uh, nothing else. I didn't see anything else. Uh, could be wrong. 
I don't know, like that. Okay. Other snacks I had, besides those cakes, uh, you would have uh, potato chips. My mom used to buy a little, ba- uh, little bags of ch- Jays, potato chips, regular barbecued, uh, sometimes the okie-dokie ones. <laughs> but, yeah, she would have potato chips. Uh, you know, when Pringles came out, you know, in the cans, uh, my mom would take a plastic bag and she put a few potato chips in, and you know, like in a sandwich bag, and she would put them in there. That was kind of nice, <laughs> like that. Also, there was something very strange. Uh, there was these fruit pouches. They're like Capri Suns or like that. But um, let's see. So, uh, so it was called. Uh, there was one. It was in the seventies. It was one of the first. It was called Sippity Duda. I think you can find them in the I found a commercial on that. And I remember they advertised that on Channel Thirty Two or Channel Nine in the afternoon when I came home from school. So you would take a straw, punch, uh, punch it, and then drink out of it. And, well, of course, it had to be refrigerated because it doesn't taste good when it's like that. And uh, they were they were great. You know, I had a couple like that. Also, the, also in my lunchbox, I had, like, fruit, a banana, an apple, an orange, uh, sometimes unpeeled. You know, my mom did that for me. You know, any type of fruit like that. Uh, so nothing healthy <laughs> in those days. I didn't see that. We didn't have microwaves back then. Uh, not at my school. No, you know, so whatever, everything was cold. What was in the lunch, you know, like that. Sometimes at my school, they had, uh, this was at Correa's elementary. Uh, they would have hot dog day, soppy Joe day. That was fun. I liked that. The funny thing is, the Soppy Joe I love, but the kids in my class didn't like it because, well, I had a, I didn't understand it. So, but it was great. Hot dog day was great. You know, you have a, to eat as many hot dogs as you like, you know, and you get a bag of chips with that. Also, uh, one more thing about, you know, when I had my lunch uh, at the school is, uh, I've had my lunch stolen a few times because uh, I was picked on. Uh, I was bullied, uh, not mostly not from my kids in my class, kids from other classes. You know, and uh, there were numerous times that my lunch was stolen. I had nothing to eat, and over there there was no place else to eat. You couldn't go to a restaurant. You couldn't go to a fast food place. So I was hungry all the time, and it was it was tough for me. And uh, I. I've told the teacher, well, at first, uh, I was embarrassed, you know, my lunch is stolen. I told the teacher one time and I said, I told her, I, I don't have a lunch. It was stolen. And she couldn't help me, uh, you know, like give me money or she would go out and get something. I was stuck. So I was starving from noon to like about 3.30 in the afternoon to get home and just, you know, chow down something like that. You know, I had to eat something, and that was that wasn't fair. You know, I mean, kids were mean. So, um, well, that was my phone. So, yeah, they were they were downright mean. You know, doing that, and uh, you know, even they did that up to eighth grade. They did that. You know, they saw my lunch. You know, I had no sandwich, no snack, nothing. There were times I, I would eat my lunch early. I would sneak off and have a sandwich like that to avoid be have, to avoid to have my lunch stolen. That's how fearful I was of that. So that's uh, that was terrible. I told I haven't told I didn't tell my mom at first, but she got angry at me because I didn't tell her sooner. <laughs> she goes and then she complained to the school. You have these uh, dumb kids that's stealing my son's lunch all the time. <laughs> But we don't know who did it. Uh, I don't know. I had an idea, but I couldn't prove it. You know, that's bad. That was a bad memory of when I brought my lunch to school like that. But I had wonderful memories of what I had for lunch, you know, with the snack cakes and the potato chips and, uh, you know, your thermos and the different kinds. And me 
and I'm seeing different kinds of lunch boxes that the other kids had when you were little. It was kind of cool. Like uh, I had my Hot Wheels lunchbox. I had the uh, lunch boxes from TV shows like The Munsters, The Partridge Family, H.R. Puffin stuff, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. The Waltons, <laughs> you know, they had that. Uh, the Adams family, I think the Adams family had one. I'm not sure. So that was, uh, I saw a Barbie one, <laughs> you know, like the movie today. <laughs> so that's my memories of that. Most of it was good, some of it was bad. That's how it is. Okay. So that's it for this show. Um, I will do a recap of what I talked about. I talk about my memories of the lunchbox snacks I had in the 1970s. Also the music, excuse me, the music craft store in the Chicagoland area. Uh, this podcast will be published uh, this afternoon. Uh, whatever podcasts are available, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Uh, just click on the app subscribe you'll get a notification of a new episode also be posted uh on my blog vanishchicagoland.blog and uh, it's also be available on my youtube channel vanishchicagoland stories the podcast people have always asked me that where do i listen to your podcast i tell them the easiest way i've always said that many times is on youtube do a search it's there subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notification i always tell people like that also be shared on my social media accounts facebook twitter which is x now uh instagram and threads so so like i said before it'll be ready uh this afternoon yeah it'll be published okay uh as for as i might do another one no excuse me i might do another podcast tomorrow we'll see i've thought about a couple subjects I will talk about in mind, and uh, one is for definite, and the other one eh, I'm mulling it over. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, so this is Pete Costanis, your host of Van Chicago and Stories the Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Everyone have a great weekend. Uh, today is gorgeous. You know, this blue sky, the weather is beautiful. I might go out for a walk this afternoon, get some fresh air. It'll do me good. So here's bye bye for me, and here's bye bye from Ray Rayner saying bye 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 with a little traveling music. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye bye bye.